I want to take just a moment to welcome you to the second annual Children's Musical. Uh, I have been looking forward to this since the first annual Children's Musical. It was so good, and I've been watching them practice over the last several months. And what you may not know is there's been a lot of work that's been put into this uh, since May, they've been meeting once a week for hours, practicing for this uh, production tonight. And so I am so excited to see how this is going to go, and I'm thrilled that we have so many young people that are going to let God work through them tonight. That's cool. Tonight's theme is Nick at Night, and it's about the story of Nicodemus. And we are absolutely thrilled that we can hear about this wonderful story of change and conversion so uh, before we begin, before they present this to us, let's pray together. God, you're an amazing God, and we thank you for opportunities and for nights like tonight. We know that uh, uh, you're in our midst, and where we gather together, that you're there. I'm so thankful for these, uh, these children and the hard work that they've put in, the sacrifice their parents have made, uh, so that they can use their gifts and their abilities and share them with us tonight. Thank you for those who've coached and who have taught uh, and, and Father, we are just so grateful that we're your children. We thank you for loving us and for the knowledge that you're the only God that can be called living. We're especially thankful that you see us through the sacrifice of your son, for that is our only hope. We praise you and honor you and thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sure, Sarah, Nicodemus? The superstar of Sanhedrin. The biggest cog in the synagogue. The brightest eye in the Pharisees' wheel. But why would Nicodemus be coming here to see Jesus and so late at night? Yeah, the Pharisees don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. In fact, they're always complaining that he's broken one of their laws. Which no one, number one or number 651? Yeah, thou shalt not sort of fly or thou shalt not swallow a gnat. Now, Elizabeth, remember, Jesus said the true law was given by God, not to make us look holy, but to make us look to God for our holiness. It's God's grace, not our goodness. Can't the Pharisees see that? What you see depends on whose eyes you're looking through.
Teresa. come at night. Maybe he's looking for the truth. Well, he'll get that and nothing but the truth. <laughs> Excuse me, children. I'm looking for a very important man. They call him rabbi or teacher. That would be Jesus, sir, resting over by the fire. That common looking man. No, I don't think you understand. This man is called the Messiah. That would be Jesus, sir. No, no, I don't think you understand. That man is called the master, the healer. That would be my Jesus, sir. I'm afraid I'm very confused. You see, I'm the master of many servants, the teacher of teachers, and the father of several sons. Yet, your answer to my question lies within this ordinary man. With all respect, sir, Jesus is no ordinary man, but he is the answer to every question. Who's the teacher's teacher? The father's dad, the shepherd to the shepherd when he's lost the lamb. Who's the helper's helper when there's just too much to do?
May we introduce you to Jesus? I think you've done just that. If you'll excuse me, I'll go introduce myself. Look at that, Sarah. It's as if Jesus has been waiting for Nicodemus all along. Sure seems that way. Let's listen and see what this Nick at night wants. What? What's Nicodemus saying? Yeah, what's Nicodemus saying? Nicodemus knows that Jesus came from God or he couldn't have done all those miracles. Yeah. He's got that right. Jesus has healed the sick, raised the dead, and fed the multitudes. What? What's Jesus saying? Yeah, what's Jesus saying? Jeez. He says, no one will enter the kingdom of God unless they're born again. But can Nicodemus understand being born again? Yeah, Nebby. He may believe a miracle he can see, but a miracle he can't see? Nicodemus has to be clueless. So what's Jesus saying now? He's telling the snake story. The snake story? Remember from the book of Numbers when the kids of Israel are dying of snake bike in the desert? As a teacher, Nicodemus would know all about that. Remember Moses put the, the snake with their eye and he said whoever looked at it and had faith in God would be saved. Now Jesus is saying he will be lifted up and whoever believes on him will have eternal life. What's Nicodemus saying? Yeah, what's Nick, uh... Becca? Sorry. But what is he saying? Nicodemus doesn't understand how an old man like him could be born again. Of course he doesn't, Sarah. It's a mystery when Jesus puts a new spirit into our old body. It's like the wind. You can't see it, but you sure can't feel it. So is Jesus telling Nicodemus what he told us? Yes, and isn't it wonderful that God's love can speak to every heart?
empty mystery chat and faith or return to his comfort zone? To his status among the ruling class? To his riches and magnificent home? We'll find out after this intermission. Stand and stretch if you choose. Just don't wonder after you're very far, or you might miss a bit of act two. Yes, Mackenzie, we can talk. This is intermission. So what happened at Ellen? Did Nicodemus believe in Jesus? Was he born again? Well, Tyler, what does it mean to be born again? Uh, I don't think I can explain it. Well, if you can't explain it, then that makes it a mystery. Yes, Mackenzie, it certainly is a mystery when someone becomes a brand new person. You mean like in those witness protection programs where the guy on TV has plastic surgery and they give him a new name and move him to a new... No, no, no. Those are just changes on the outside. The new birth is changes from the inside out, becoming not an improved version of the old you, but a brand new creation. I'm sorry, Ellen, but now I'm clueless. Well, let's see how I can illustrate this. I know, if I pinch my program together in the middle like this, what does it kind of look like? A butterfly. Yes, and many people use butterflies to describe being born again. Nicodemus? 
Well, Tyler, God's plan is for everyone born here on earth to also be born into his heavenly kingdom. But God doesn't make anyone be born again. It's your choice to accept Jesus as a savior, just as it was Nicodemus' choice. So what, did he, so what did he choose? Here comes the hostess. Maybe she'll tell us. Time has passed as we begin Act 2, but the hour is still the same. It's nighttime as the Sanhedrin meets, but as Nicodemus part of their game, these rulers want to arrest Jesus. The Pharisees were seldom fair, but will there be a different outcome because our Nick at night is there? Nicodemus, Law 453 says, we can't begin a meeting of the Sanhedrin until we make sure all the religious leaders are here. Um, of course. Phil Pharisee. Here! Fred Pharisee. Yo! Frank Pharisee. Present. And we have a new member of the Sanhedrin. Your name? Florist. Florist Pharisee. <laughs> Ferris. 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 Yeah, I'm here. Now to the problem at hand. This Jesus healed a man on the Sabbath. <gasps> That's breaking our law number 12. We've seen what Fred Pharisee saw and more. This prophet spoke to a woman, a Samaritan woman. <gasps> That's breaking our law number 28 and 32. He not only speaks to sinners, he dines with them and gives and offers forgiveness of sins. <gasps> That's 118, 246, and 398. I saw, we, I saw what Frank Pharisee saw and heard even worse. What did this Galilean say, Fred? He said you will look for me, but you will not find me. And yet where I am, you cannot come. What nonsense is this, Nicodemus? Where I am, you cannot come. Who does he think he is, the sausage king of Jerusalem? But is it nonsense? Maybe Jesus meant he would be going to heaven, but the hypocrites wouldn't. If anyone were headed for heaven, it would be us, the Pharisees. We're better than everyone. Why? You can tell by just looking at us. We're practically perfect. Ah, here's our man. Sir! Guard, did you arrest this imposter? No, sir. Jesus has broken no law, sir. And by my account, no one has spoken the way that this man does, sir. Ha, he may have tricked you, soldier. But I'm sure none of us Pharisees believe in this Jesus. Right, Nicodemus? Nicodemus. Nick. Does our law first condemn anyone without hearing him out? Hear him out? Oh, I should have called him sick. I'd like to hear him out out of town. Like my mama always said. Oh, come on, Forrest. A prophet from Galilee? No, I'd call that stupid. Like my mama always said, stupid is as stupid does. <laughs> Looks like we'll have to take care of this man ourselves, with or without Nicodemus. Yeah, did he become a, a secret disciple or something? Come on, Forrest. Let's go. Yes, and on our way, we'll discuss our Pharisee philosophy of life. You know, like my mama always said, life is a box of... Give it up, Forrest. <laughs> Permission to ask you something, sir. Addy, soldier, what is it? Are you, are you a secret disciple, a believer in Jesus, or do you just, do you just like to annoy your friends by taking up for him? No, I've spoken with Jesus. You have? What did you find out about him? The question should be, what did I find out about Nicodemus? What is that, sir? That in spite of my position, my education, and all my good intentions, the old Nicodemus was lost in the darkness of sin. So tell me, sir, what happened? Well, I was in the dark until I met the light, Jesus Christ. You're seeking to save with me, sir. I just pray that it will become your secret, too. Yes, yes sir! A secret disciple, and remember, we'll see if Nick keeps his secret as we move to Act 3. Wow, Aunt Ellen, I've heard of 
a secret agent, but never a secret disciple. But how can Nicodemus be a Christian if he didn't want anyone to know? That's a good question. Are you a Christian, Tyler? You know I am. Yeah, but you never invite your friends to church. And when the pastor asks if you want to read the scripture on Children's Sunday, you pretend to have laryngitis. So what if I, <clears throat> so what if I did? So Nicodemus was the secret disciple and Tyler too. <laughs> when all of us are tempted to be secret disciples. Like Nicodemus, we might even have to keep our faith a secret for a while. But when it was time for him to stand up for Jesus, Nicodemus was willing to... Shh! Don't spoil the mystery, Aunt Ellen. Yeah, here comes the hostess with Act 3. <laughs> Welcome back to our play in three acts, the third that which starts rather sadly. The Pharisees arrested Jesus. He was mocked and beaten badly. But though our Savior had done nothing wrong, he was plotted and put to death. And now Sarah, Nebby, and Becca are alone, with nothing but his promises left.
he was lifted up to save others. happiest note. Jesus waits to welcome us into his heavenly home. And what is the mystery of Nick at night's new birth? 
The answer is Jesus died for everyone on earth. The godly and the righteous are here in Nicodemus. The criminals and the hypocrites, the selfish and the meanest. And what a mystery that is, that the wicked and the nice, through grace, receive a brand new birth when they trust in Jesus Christ. Undeserved, it can't be earned, yet it's easily explained. It's God's free gift to you and me by trusting on his name. So the mystery is that everyone needs to be born again? That's why God sent his only son. That's right, Mackenzie. Yeah. And as we've learned from Nicodemus in this play with three parts, there are three things we must do to trust God with all our hearts. Repent, believe, and obey. Be baptized today without a delay. So as we close, I'll share with you these necessary facts and pray like Nick at night, your life is seen in these three acts. Guys, that was awesome. We are so incredibly blessed to have just incredible talent at our church and how God can use that talent in so many different ways. So, Miss Cammy, if you would come up here, please. We all need to give her a hand as well. She has worked so hard. 
since May. <laughs> They've been having practice every Wednesday since May, and so that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of practices. Um, so thank you so much to Cammie, for everybody who's helped her, to all you parents who've been bringing them in. Um, it was awesome to watch. We also have another special person we would like to recognize tonight before we head out. Um, is Emily, our wonderful intern here? She's somewhere. She's over there. She's over there. <laughs> Emily's not going, to be with on sun, not going to be with us on Sunday, so we wanted to take a second to just say thank you so much. Um, she has been such a blessing to our children's ministry this summer, as I know all you guys have seen. Just She has so many talents, and I know that she's going to make a phenomenal children's minister someday. So to close out, I just want to pray over all these guys and um, over Cammie. I know she needs lots of prayers now, now lots of rest. Um, and also for Emily as she goes back to school and, and just thanking her for an awesome summer. So if you guys will join me in prayer and then we'll be dismissed. Don't forget the art show. Those kids have done some amazing work out there. All right, let's pray, guys. Father God, you are just an awesome God and we're so thankful for just the talent that you give us and, and for you to put people in our lives and in our church who can show us that talent in, in so many different ways, God. These kids have worked so hard, and we are just, it was a thrill to watch, and what, what a blessing they have been to us. Thank you so much for Cami for all the hard work that she's put in, and all those long hours. Um, God, she did it for you. She did it for your glory, and she is also such a blessing to our church. We also want to say just a special thank you to Emily and, and the incredible job she's done this summer. Um, through Summer Jam, through Summer Camp, with everything, she has been a joy for us, and we are so thankful, Lord, that you put her um, in our path. Above all, God, we just thank you so much for your son. We thank you so much for his sacrifice and the fact that we don't have to be secret disciples, God, that we can be disciples out in the open, bringing people to you. Thank you, Lord, so much for all our blessings. In your sons, let me pray. Amen.